Are you experiencing knee pain with daily activities or exercises? Well, there's a number of reasons that you could be having this, and we're going to go through this, but... Many individuals will assume <sighs> knee pain is related to arthritis, but there are many other things to consider. And we're going to go through these and show you some exercises, some things that you may not have thought of to get rid of this at home by yourself. So we have worked with many people over the years, and they often come in with knee pain, specifically in the front of the knee, kind of over the kneecap. And often they complain about pain increasing when they go up or down stairs. Right. You know, I found a lot of times it's, it's even more down steps, but it can be either direction. But there's good news with this. If we need to assess the knee a little closer, and oftentimes you can see Mike is working with his patella or the kneecap, and it should be movable and mobile like that. There's a tendon here and a tendon here that connects the quadricep uh, and the patella to the bone here. Those two tendons can oftentimes lead to knee pain. Actually, my sister had knee pain so terrible that she was literally walking on or <laughs> kneeling, crawling on her hands and knees, forgive me, uh, and, and ended up to find, to find out it wasn't her knee joint, it wasn't arthritis, and we'll tell you what it was and how she took care of it. So there are six <laughs> solutions we're going to go through to help decrease your knee pain here. And the first one is to simply avoid activities that irritate this pain, make it worse, which we talked about earlier, could be the stairs. That's right. So it's just a simple thing there. Number two is we're going to actually take a closer look at the kneecap or the patella. You want to get it up in a position like Mike has and have the leg completely relaxed, particularly the quadricep muscles. Now, what when these are completely relaxed, you're going to find a very interesting thing that some people may not be aware of is that the patella or the kneecap will actually be very mobile. You can see me moving it right to left and we just want to make sure that all the connective tissue are, is, has no scar tissue or not tight from being immobile if you're sedentary over the past months or years. So we can go right to left. You can move it up and down. This should not be painful. If it hurts a little bit, the first couple motions, that's okay as long as it feels better with time. And I mean over five to 10 seconds. So right to left, feels better. Does it feel better? Feels great. If it feels good or better, go ahead, up and down, same thing. And you can actually kind of work some angles on it as well. You'll spend maybe 30 seconds to a minute probably doing this. This will help a certain amount of people. There are going to be other people that they'll do this and they'll find uh, it, it moves, everything's good. So then we're going to go on to the next uh, solution. So the third solution is to do manual cross friction massage. It's a fancy way of saying you're going to massage the painful areas. So if your pain is below the kneecap here, you can take two fingers, cross it over, or I'm going to use my thumb because it's a little bit easier for me. I'm going to put my other thumb on top. I'm going to push down, and I'm going to go back and forth on this tendon. You're going to do this for two minutes if you can tolerate it. Obviously, the harder you push, the more it's going to dig in there. Now, if your painful area is above your kneecap, and here, the quad tendon region, you can do the same thing up there. Do it for two minutes, like I mentioned before. And this will increase the blood flow to these tendon areas, helping decrease your pain, bring nutrients, and make it recover faster. There's one exception I want to bring involved with this. As you're doing the cross-friction massage, like Mike described, after about 30 seconds, if the pain doesn't reduce or does it, if it feels numb, then it's okay. But if it just continues to irritate it and uh, you're getting into that 30 seconds to 60 seconds and it feels like it's, ah, this really hurts more, then you need to stop. It's too early to do this cross friction massage. You're going to need to wait a day or two. All right, so you're going to find out after massaging your tendons or the muscles with your hands, which works quite well, actually. Your fingers will probably get tired, particularly if you're having success and you're doing it for that two minutes like Mike had suggested. If you happen to have a massage gun or a friend that has one, use it. It'll save your fingers if you want to purchase one. That's an option, but you don't need to. Uh, so when you use a massage gun for this particular cross-friction massage, you have to have a massage gun that reciprocates back and forth like this. Okay, otherwise you will not get the same results. And you need about 10, 10 millimeters of amplitude that direction. That's really not that critical. It just gives you an idea if you're shopping around. The heads that you'll want to use, 
is the round head, which I am using. That's my preferred for this technique. Or you can use the cushion head here. It's an air cushion head because you're going to be around your kneecap and the bones of your knee. And if you massage your bone anywhere on your body, it is not going to do anything except create pain. <laughs> we don't want that. So we're not going to massage the bone at all. And I'll show you the technique. If you're using... Now, the, the tendon that we talked about below the kneecap is here and here, and there's a soft spot right below the kneecap. We talked about that. You take the massage gun, and I think this part particularly works best with the, the round head. Do not go straight in. That's going to pound and beat up your tendon and your knee. It's going to do nothing but bad. Go sideways, and then you get that cross-friction massage just below that kneecap kneecap in that hollow spot, it's so much easier, and it's uh, just a delight. It works out very well. Now, Bob actually had this tendonitis knee pain, same as my sister, above the kneecap where the muscles, the quadricep muscles, all come together and connect to the kneecap. So we're going to do it this way. And Bob was massaging his actually manually, and... Uh, his fingers were getting tired, right, Bob? Yeah, he's shaking his head. And he started the gun. And how long? Within a, how many days? Within a couple days, having great success and things are going well. Now, when you, one thing that you may want to assess is see if the muscles up this direction are tight or have any knots in them. Uh, you, that may be the case. And you'll know because when you're pushing around and you'll feel a tender spot, kind of like a tootsie roll in that muscle. If you have that, then you can actually go into that muscle because you have more uh, mass, more muscle mass, muscle fibers. And then you can get more aggressive when you're away from the knee. And again, work that for a few minutes. This is actually the case with my sister's knee problem. Part of it was the knee, part of it was the tendons or the muscles up in here were really tight and limiting that kneecap mobility, which is needed for a healthy knee. Wow. And actually, this is a, it's a nice deal. We could probably go on like this for five or ten minutes, but we've got more information to help you out with. All right, and the last technique, number six, is we want to actually stretch the quadricep muscles. Again, they connect to the kneecap here, up to the pelvis area. Right in here, we're going to show how to do that, as well as there's another uh, structure, which is the IT band. It's kind of like a wide ligament. It actually is exactly where these three stripes are. Connects up from the pelvis down to just below the knee, and we need to stretch that out a little bit as well. That can take pressure off that knee as well. So, Mike, it's all yours. So you're going to lay on the firm mattress or bed of sorts. You can also do this on a table if your bed is too soft. You don't want to fall off the edge. So you're going to start on your back. Your feet are going to be off the edge of the bed. If you want more of a stretch in the front hips, you scoot more towards the bottom of the bed here. But for now, I will stay here. Try to bring both knees to chest to start. And now you're going to drop the side that's painful down. Now, when you go down like this, you want to try to keep in a straight line. If it's too tight, pulling out or pulling in, that's not going to be the stretch you want. You want to keep your legs straight. Now, to get my quad stretched even more, all I'm going to do is bend my heel back like this, and I feel it more. Now, if this feels good, you don't feel stretched at all, just scoot your buttock off the edge more, and you will start to feel it. Now, an important thing to remember is bring your opposite leg up here. Bring your knee towards your chest. Hold this position. Try to do it for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, bring this leg back up. Rest here for a second. And then you're going to switch sides. And you might notice one side is tighter than the other. If one side is, really focus on that side. But it is good to do both sides. Do 30-second holds and do it two to three times a day. And I do want to mention it's real critical when you do this that you have either some short some some stretchy pants. Uh, are these all stretchy jeans? They are yeah, stretchy. He's got jeans up, but they're the stretchy kind. If you wear jeans, things bind up, and you will not get a good stretch. All right, nice work, Mike. Stretch away.
So those first six steps were to help remedy your pain in your kneecap. So if your kneecap is feeling good now and you want to start progressing more, what you want to do is start walking again. You want to make sure it is pain-free walking. Start on flat surfaces and slowly progress. Don't go out walking a mile if you haven't walked in weeks. Just start slow, maybe do a quarter mile. Progress each day as it feels comfortable. That's right. And remember, uh, if you have hills, Make sure you avoid those on the flat. And actually at roads, uh, like on the road I live on, there's no sidewalks. And the roads always have a camber so the water runs off. Well, that angle that you're walking on can put stress on your ankle, your knee, as your hip. So don't walk on, if you walk down the road on the right, turn around and walk on the same side of the road so you balance things off. Sometimes that's not safe if that's a situation try to get to a spot where it's flat sidewalk or trails where you don't have the unevenness. Now, if you were doing some form of resistance training before or exercises and you want to start those again, it's important to remember to do maybe partial range of motion early on or drop the weight significantly if you were using weight while doing these. So we're talking about things that involve your knees, so such as like some type of squat or some type of lunging form. Just do a partial range of motion as long as it feels good. If it creates pain, hold off for a while till you try again. Right, and a lot of you may not have used weights in the past, you know, and that's fine if you want to get back to this. So again, like Mike mentioned, if you want to decrease the intensity and you don't use weight, just body weight, you're going to do that by how far you go down. So previously, if, if you were squatting this far down without any problems, the knee is feeling better now and you can do it pain free. Even if it's a little baby squat, it's like, what good is this doing? But if you get down to here, it hurts. Do not do that. It's pain-free range. Give it some time. Or if you're doing lunges, you know, you might have been going until your knee touches at one time prior to the injury. You may only go down half the distance and give it a week or two. Be patient with it because you don't want to re-irritate the old injury and set yourself back to where you were. If things will come along. Just be happy and be glad that you can do them. We should <laughs> add that you want to make sure you're using proper form with uh, any type of leg exercises. So if your knee tends uh, to track in, that is a no-no. You need to work on your outside leg muscles to keep it straight. So make sure your knee is staying in line or even going slightly out is okay, but you don't want to go in like this. Right. That's the most common error is that knee going in. It's no good. I always tell my patients, get that knee over the top of your toe when you're looking down and that'll help keep that sagittal plane is what we call it in the therapy world. All right, very good. All right, give these tips and tricks a try. There's a good chance you're going to find some relief with them. If not, it may be something is more. Maybe you do have arthritis and you need to have a different approach. So if you want to find out more videos related to this topic, you can check out the comment section. We sometimes pin it to the top, some other related videos. Otherwise, if you're interested in one of the massage guns we talked about, they'll be located there too. Also, you can comment down below anything maybe we forgot because Brad doesn't know everything. That, well, that's right. But I do know this. This is a side note. You can get off. Do you realize what happened yesterday? It was a sad work, sad day yesterday. No. Well, what happened? If you you heard of the Edmund Fitzgerald? Yes. And you know who sang the song of the Edmund Fitzgerald? I, I don't, but. Gor Gordon Lightfoot. He's 84 years old. He passed away, and he gave a wonderful tribute to all 29 sailors or the men uh, in that ship. Down it went in Lake Superior, 530 feet of water, 30-foot swells, and it made this largest cargo ship of 29 tons of ore, just broke it like a toothpick. Down it went. You know who else passed away? Who? Jerry Springer. Oh, really? Yeah. That's right. Well, he didn't sing, though. <laughs> <laughs>